Hold up. Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and we are going to talk today about dinosaurs and the Jurassic period and all of that fun stuff. I know a lot of us when we were kids loved dinosaurs, whether it was Jurassic Park, which is still going, which is amazing, or stuff like Dino Dan and looking into just exactly what happened before man walked the earth. And I never thought that the Jurassic League would be something that I was like, I love this. I absolutely love the way that they did this. And I think this was really smart to bring in new readers and younger readers. And of course, it is done by Daniel Warren Johnson, who is going to do a good job. I think we all expected that. But pairing him with Juan Gideon on this funky-esque art, I love it. This was really good. And in spite of it not really having a whole bunch of new ideas, right? We're going to get into the first son of Krypton coming to Earth. And it's nothing new. We're going to get into the Joker and Batman relationship. Really nothing new. In spite of that, I loved this. I love the way that they changed things. I love the puns. I will tell you what. Ever since I was a little girl... I love terrible dad puns. I think they are the funniest thing in the world. And my dad used to always make, and still does, make these terrible puns. And I would just, I, I think they're hilarious. I really do. And there's a lot of that in here. And you're going to see. Let's actually get into it. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. This is going to be a bit, a bit of a lazy edit here. I don't have a whole bunch of time. So we're going to go through it on a PDF format. So we have the Jurassic League. And of course, we have... It, the same story, right? Krypton is blowing up. We see Clark sent away. But now, instead of coming to the Earth on a current time period, we're seeing him sent back into the Jurassic period. And we actually see him raised by humans, which I didn't expect. I wasn't sure what to expect. But um, I kind of love it. I'm not going to lie. I kind of do. And we actually have... And when we go into it, we'll see that um, Superman is a bronchiosaurus, Batman is an allosaurus, Joker is a, a dipithosaurus, one of those from Jurassic Park, you remember, that, like, spews venom. It's um, it's quite disturbing. I still remember that scene in Jurassic Park way too well. And Wonder Woman is a tricer. Oh, and Aquaman. Aquaman is a mosasaurus. So we've got all of these different types of... They've done their homework, is what I want to say. They've done their homework. So we actually get to see Batman here and he looks, I don't know why I think he looks so good, but like, it's so goofy, but it's still so good. So he's sensing the smell and um, basically he's okay in this, obviously, because the rules are different with, you know, killing to eat because the, there's a lot of carnivores. So carnivores are fine, but petty killing, killing for no reason. And that's the trail that he's on. Somebody that is out there killing for no reason. And we actually come upon it in this, this thing has made a tree out of dead human beings, right? Dead humans. That's what we see. And it's in its Joker. <laughs> Joker Zoid. Joker Zoid. Joker Zoid, I guess. Um, but we see him, you know, attack and Batman almost get to the point where he is pretty far down. Like he's losing. Joker Zoid is spitting instead of, you know, toxic gas, spitting toxic venom. I fucking love it. I'm not going to lie. And and we see this crying child, right? In all the mix of this tree that has a bunch of people in it, a crying child for their mother and father. And I love how it says translated from human. <laughs> I, it's it's entertaining. So that crying child gives him that little extra pep in his step that he needs. And he is able to get over on the Joker. And he actually remembers the smell. He remembers the smell of that toxic spew. And in this story, sorry, Martha, sorry, Thomas, you always die. At this time, it was at the hands of Joker Zoid. So he does go through and we actually see this child follow him and he's like, go away, go away, go away. And he doesn't. He just follows them. And I think we're getting kind of set up for this new like Robin idea. Maybe, maybe. But I love it. I The, the kid is just like going to follow him no matter what. I love it. So then we switch over to Black Mantasaurus. He wants people to bow to him because he is the king or so he thinks of the seas. And we actually then get you know, 
Aquamanosaurus. I don't remember what they call him. I just add a saurus to everything and I think we're good. But we get the Aquaman creature and he takes him on, obviously, right? And ends up beating him. We're just getting the introduction to these characters. I want you to remember that. They're just getting, they're just beginning. And also the puns with the names, like instead of Gotham, we have Grouthum. Instead of Themyscira, we have Trimuscira. Because, you know, she's Triceratops. Get it? Funny, funny. I love it. I love it too much. So we go through and we get to meet Wonder Woman and her mother. We get to meet Hippolyta. And she tells her the story of Ares. They actually keep Ares' bones here. And again, they're separate. But she says she knew a time would come when Diana, uh, uh, Wonder Dawn, would actually go out into the world. And that's what we see happen. Just the very beginnings of all of these stories. I love Super Sore. I thought it was going to look really dumb as a Brachiosaurus, but I love it so much. So he's building something very similar to what looks like the Fortress of Solitude, and he's keeping all of these people safe. He goes back to his parents, and he's, you know, entertaining the kids with his tail. Like, oh, it's so cute. And um, he's he's got this whole shelter for him, right? He's, he's keeping them safe until we have Giganta, and I don't know. We'll zoom in here a little bit. I don't know what the name, Bronto, Azoro, so, you know, Bizarro and Giganta um, appear, and and he wants to keep his parents safe. I love the um, how they're diving into the relationship with him and his parents. It's so good, and they're just setting the stakes here. This is six issues. We're getting the introduction, and this was, <laughs> it was fun. It was fun, and that's what's so crazy about this. I smiled the whole way through. I laughed like there was parts where I generally thought that it was adorable. There will there were parts that I like laughed out loud at the puns. This is what DC Comics needed fun. And that is the I know it's silly, like, you know, having fun reading a comic book, whatever. Um, I know it's a silly word to use, but that's exactly what they put back. And you know what else they can do with stuff like this? They can market it to kids and they can make different sort of toys would be extremely smart this i honestly think is going to be extremely successful because it was that good like it's not it may be my pick of the entire week we'll see how nightmare country goes but this was so sweet wholesome in a weird kind of way and something you could enjoy with your kids kids love dinosaurs great job on this to daniel warren johnson and um i forget the other guy's name um, uh, Juan Guinean, this is a breath of fresh air in exactly what I was looking for and I didn't know I needed. <laughs> Let me know, of course, what you guys think of this. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.